I take this opportunity to welcome you across South Africa and also those who are stationed outside of South Africa, including even our friends from all over the world. I would like you to give me this opportunity to continue on the topic that we have established some time ago that says make a move. Make a move. God is expecting you in this life. It doesn't matter what the Ritma Rolls are saying. It doesn't matter what the circumstances and situations are saying. God would like you to make a move. If you may, please, let's bow our heads. Let me read this prayer for you. Heavenly Father, we are gathered in the name of Jesus in the manner that we are gathered. You are able by your eyes to locate wherever we are. And the Lord God Almighty, you are about to unleash knowledge, wisdom, and understanding into our lives. Therefore, we thank you that your presence is with us. Amen. Well, we are going to be reading from the same text, which is Samuel chapter 16, verse 17 to 18, the first book of Samuel. If we may turn there and let us read these two portions of scriptures. The Bible says, And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. I want you to underline the word that can play well. That can play well. In other words, a person that has mastered the skill of playing. And going to verse 18, it says, Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite. There is cunning in play, and a mighty, valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him. I said to you when we were establishing this category of the word of God, that I said, I am going to attempt to give you or establish a comparative analysis to the resume of Saul and of David. And I said that these scriptures are giving to us a glaring and a difference between the profiles of Saul and of David, and how ultimately they were led to their thrones. We highlighted that Saul was largely selected based on his physicality, that his physicality built around his charisma. And then I showed you from the scriptures as we read in 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 2, that much of the highlights about his selection were based on his face and also on the nature of his height. And when Prophet Samuel wanted to replay that record when he came to Bethlehem, to come and do the anointing as instructed by God. What he was looking for was that kind of a charisma. But God had to change his method as to how he needed to choose a leader. And in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, it highlights that, that God was saying he must not be persuaded by the looks and by the physicality. God wanted him now to move away from the outward appearance and God wanted that he should focus on the inner qualities. So God is exposing the human tendencies in the manner in which 
they go about selecting leaders. Yet, it becomes very strange because when you look at institutions, organizations and families, they do not look at outward appearances. They are not moved by the looks, but instead they understand that looks are short-lived. So in this manner, God is bringing that kind of a lesson that when we are going to be focusing on physical appearance, on the outwardness, that is not long-lived, it is short-lived. So God is contrasting that with the selection of David. He said, I have chosen for myself in the house of Jesse. And God therefore goes much deeper to show us what is it that he has chosen. So largely, we see that God focus on inner qualities. All the acquired practices that were upon the son of Jesse. And these, they form universal traits in the manner in which leadership and in the manner in which people are selected. These are universal qualities and I would say to you that they are also timeless. And I would like that you should give me the opportunity that I go a little bit deeper because you need to work on these inner qualities. You need to develop them. You need to grow yourself into them. According to the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 80, the Bible says, And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the wilderness till the day of his showing into Israel. I want you to underline that, that in the wilderness, Wilderness here might not literally be the wilderness, but we can euphemize and say that wilderness, it is a place of obscurity. It is not a place of public domain. And it says he grew in there. That means the stature of who he was was not into public scrutiny. However, once he had developed those particular traits, he was more confident that he could show himself in the public's eye. So saying with David here that it shows us that there are people in this life prematurely who move into public scrutiny, but they lack the development of particular traits. So with David, when he was now revealed, he was of full package. That is, was now all around it. A pity that in our situations, there are many people who avoid training. That means they do not like this regimen of going over and over until they have mastered a skill. Because, you know, when you go for training, training is different from teaching. Training is more repetitive. But sometimes many people, they leave that kind of training because they get bored. But training influences behavior. Training influences outcomes. And therefore, when we look at David, we realize that David was not just about inculcation of information or knowledge. He had trained rigorously. He had shaped his behavior in a manner in which he was able even to sling, that is to throw stones through the sling. It tells you that he has mastered the art of being accurate. So, the qualities that were perceived from David and those qualities that were promoted by this young man, however that young man being a stranger and uh, living in a different location, 
But when then it was requested, is there anyone that can help King Saul in this rigmarole that he's going through? What spoke was not the beauty or the handsomeity of David. It was not about his height, but what spoke for him was the skill. That tells you that the skill will speak for you. It will speak for you in positions of authority, in positions of power. Now, if we may just go a little bit deeper again and look at what is the skill that David possessed? What is it that set David apart? What is it that made David to be unparalleled? Number one, this young man, when he stood to raise the profile of David, he spoke about David being cunning. That means he had acquired a special skill. That is what has set him apart. I said to you, that has made him to be unparalleled. In other words, you could not compare him with his peers. So that tells me that skill will produce required results in anybody's life. Skill will make you to exude particular competencies. Skill will open doors for you. As a matter of fact, just where we have read, when recommendations were made about David, these recommendations were based on something that they saw about him. David, when he came before Saul, he was full packaged. And this is where I want to say to you, you need to develop skill in your life. Because skill has got a voice. Skill has got a language. Skill will speak for you. I say skill will speak for you. Varied things were experienced by Saul. Diverse kind of things were experienced by him. But as soon as he had a need in his life, he did not require any beauty, he did not require any fashion streaks, but he zoomed on what was required. It was the skill. Now, let me say to you that when I say that David came not only through the skill, but he came as a full package. There are certain things that you would need also that you need to develop besides the skill. The skill will open the door for you. The skill will make your CV to be read. But you still need other qualities in your life other than just only to possess that kind of skill. And with David, the Bible tells us where we have read that David had confidence. That means he had trained certain faculties in his mind. And those faculties were speaking louder for him. Regardless that they are internal. But all the time these faculties will be able to be exposed. So I speak about emotions, I speak about his will, I speak about the internet. These are the inner qualities that are possessed by the mind. So when the Bible tells us about his confidence, it simply tells us that David was not easily intimidated. He had trained his mind not to be intimidated. Largely many people are intimidated by sound. Many people are intimidated by height. But to him, those were no factors that would intimidate him. That is why he was able to bring a testimony that he has killed a lion. You know that a lion largely majors in sound. Once it roars, it sends shivers down the spine of animals in the jungle. So 
He had learned to master the art of not being intimidated by sound. And again, he says he had killed a bear. A bear largely is about height. It will intimidate you because it's larger. However, David had mastered that his brain power will not be intimidated by any height. So can I submit to you that David had much confidence. He was not intimidated by any kind of height. And that was more transported. It tells me that the skill can be transported. You can be able to take it from one geographical location to the other. When he was faced with Goliath, Goliath demonstrated even these two categories. He was louder in the manner in which he spoke, and that intimidated many other people. He was also great in height. But when David came, he realized that this is the skill that he had developed. Even out there in the obscurity, he had developed that skill and he was able to use it even in positions that were different from where he had experienced them in the wilderness. So you need to come and exude that confidence. So that, that will take training that you go over and over and over to develop the mastery of confidence. The other third thing that I would want to talk about is conflagration that we saw coming out of David. He carried what I say his ability of formulating strategies and tactics beyond the wilderness. In other words, he established a formidable army from the outcasts, from the fugitives, and those who were abandoned. You remember that the word of the Lord talks about 600 of mighty men of valor that he was able to orchestrate and form a formidable team. That tells me that David had mastered the art of being able to take varied elements and bring them together. He was able to synchronize. And this is where I am coming in, that that's a skill that also spoke for him. Because this young man that stood in front of King Saul, he mentioned this kind of skill that it was manifest in the life of David. So in other words, David did not relegate himself geographically only to develop and exude the skill there. He was able to extend his skill and make adaptations as he went along. Number four, he was circumspect very calculative, very discreet. In other words, he was prudent, not haphazard, but very cautious and frugal. And this is what you need to develop in life, that you don't have to be haphazard in the manner that you handle yourself. You need to be very discreet. So David was circumspect. Number five, he was very calmly, well proportioned, orderly, not noisy in his appearance. In other words, he had developed the skill of being neat. Once you become neat, I am saying that skill will speak to you in positions of power, to the people of authority. You maintain a particular decorum in your life. You are neat in the manner in which you speak. You don't use vulgar words. You are very discreet. You are orderly. The language of David tells me that it was a language that was orderly. He was well proportioned. And lastly, number six, this young man spoke about David being congruent. That is, 
He had aligned God's principles in his life. They were enshrined in him. He would have realized that all these qualities that I spoke to you about, they start with a C. Then I was making it more easier for you that you could remember them. These are universal qualities. They are not subject to geographical limitations and they are not moving according to the winds of time. They are timeless. Endeavor to develop these qualities and be found to be better than your peers. This is a message that I'm bringing for you this evening. I would want you to go over and over and over on this message and learn to develop these qualities. They will speak volumes for you to the positions and echelons of power, to people of authority. It's not only just your CV. Your CV will open the door for you, and that's it. But you need to develop and ingrain inside of you these kind of qualities. God bless the teaching of this evening. May the Lord ingrain inside of you these qualities as you go to develop them and train yourself into them, immerse yourself into them. Amen.